what is up JMA fans, this is Josh. Finally, we are going to be reviewing the latest My Hero Academia release from Revel Tech Amazing Yamaguchi, which is of course Pretty Boy himself, Todoroki. <laughs> Now I did got this from AmiAmi Ami Japan, it's actually my first time ordering directly from an overseas store and they did provide good service. The reason I got him a bit late was because I use ASP shipping which was a bad move because if you wanted to get your order shipped right away then you'd have to assign them for DHL shipping instead in which most people did recommend me to do so I'll be sure to do that on my next pre-orders. But anyways now it's time to get into Todoroki. First we are gonna be taking a full review of this guy and then later on we are gonna do a quick comparison with the Figma version. I asked you guys before if you wanted me to do a separate video for the comparisons and most of you did said that I should just do it all in one video so let's just do that. Now first let's have a look at the beautiful packaging that Kyoto always does so well. As you would have expected there is a lot of graphic images blasted all over the box both from the anime and the figure itself. This is how the top looks like as well as the bottom. The front of the box has this big window as you've seen already. Here is the right side of the box, the left side of the box and the back of the box. Now inside the box we do get a clearer view of the inner packaging as well as this amazing backdrop of Todoroki and the instruction sheet. Moving on to the figure itself, here we have Todoroki straight out of the packaging looking very nice. I think they did an amazing job with the sculpt here. Todoroki has a very simple design and yet they were still able to give this guy so much detail. I especially love all the wrinkles around his costume. I think it makes the figure look really good and realistic. The face turned out pretty good as well, however, I don't think it's perfectly accurate. I feel like the eyes are a little bit too sharp, but it's not too far off. Overall, this is a really great looking figure. The sculpting is really great and they really did manage to capture Todoroki's personality. Moving on to accessories, Todoroki comes with 8 interchangeable faces, including the one he already came with in the package. The first one is a serious face looking forward, then he has a dull looking face looking slightly upwards, another one looking to the left, a serious one looking to the right, and another one looking below. What are you looking at? And then of course he comes with an angry face looking forward, an angry face looking to the left, and looking downwards. Yeah, apparently he doesn't have an angry face looking to the right, but Personally, I think that's fine since they've already provided a lot of options. And then it comes with 9 swappable hands. First is of course a pair of fist, a pair of open palm hands, a pair of relaxed hands, a right hand specifically made to hold another accessory which is his smartphone. The screen shows text messages but there aren't actually any texts on it. This phone fits perfectly onto the right hand like this and then he comes with his left hand that can be used for him to tap on his phone or can also be used for holding onto his collar, just like how they've shown in the promo images. Lastly, he comes with a flat open palm hand that is meant for one of his ice accessories, which is this. All you do is put that on the floor, lean his hand onto it. As you can see, the ice was sculpted to match the shape of his hand perfectly, and that looks like that. Also, before moving on, I would just like to point out that the bracelet thingies that he's wearing on his wrist has a separate piece that would easily fall off when swapping out hands so be sure to hold the wrist while removing the hands to avoid losing them. Okay now moving on to his effect pieces Todoroki comes with two ice effects that can also be attached together. There's at least three holes on each piece. One of the holes are already plugged in and then you do get two extra joints to plug in the rest. This effect can be attached on the back of his leg but before we go over that he also has peg holes on the bottom of his feet so you can plug it down there as well and use it like that. He then comes with two smaller ice effects that can attach to his arm, which I will be showing in just a bit. He comes with three flame effects, these are all pretty much identical. I wish they would have given us more variations, like maybe there's a wider one or a smaller one, but either way, it's still better than giving us nothing. He also comes with this alternate hairpiece that looks more dynamic. It has a small flame effect attached on the left side of it. To use this, of course, you just gotta remove the front of the hair and just swap it out just like that. Now this accessory will not be complete if we don't use all the other effects on Todoroki, so without further 
further ado, let's put them all on together. As you can see, Todoroki does have holes all over his back where you can attach all the effects onto. You can attach two fire effects on his left arm, two smaller ice effects on his right, one more fire effect on his left leg, and two bigger ice effects that are connected together on his right leg. And of course, you can move those around as well. And now we have a fully powered Todoroki ready to burst out and go plus ultra against Dobby. Man, this just looks sick. Kyoto never fails to give us the right amount of accessories to play with. I mean, come on. There is just no way you will think that this isn't top tier. It's just that good. And before we move on to the articulation, let's not forget that Todoroki also comes with your standard Reveltech stand, which of course you can attach to the hole on his back and use it like that. Or you can use the clamp to attach onto the figure like that. Although it doesn't really hold the figure very well, it's pretty much just being supported by the upper torso, that's why it's staying there. But as you can see, if I try to clamp it on his lower waist, it doesn't really clamp onto the figure, it just slides down until it hits that upper torso. And then last but not least, you also have this other adapter for the stand to clip the onomatopoeia effects. Of course, you gotta remove the plastic to have a clearer view of it. You got one that says Foosh for fire, Foosh for ice, and Wacom for both fire and ice all together. Alright now finally moving on to articulation. Todoroki's head can tilt side to side, can rotate, can move up all the way. As you can see he does have that gap on the back of his head on purpose. That's so you can slide it inwards and have more space for his head to go in further. And then of course, he can look all the way down. His arms can rotate, can move inwards very far, can move outward, elbow bend that far, wrist can rotate, move down and up. The bracelet piece can also rotate to avoid hindering the hand movements. He can crunch forward pretty much all the way as expected from a Reveltech figure. And then of course, he can move back just okay. The wieners on his belt are also articulated to help avoid hindering the leg movement. However, the ones on the back are not movable, but doesn't really matter since we're only gonna use the ones on the front anyways. His waist can rotate, leg can move outward, move back, forward, knee bend, foot can rotate, move down and up, as well as toe hinge. And finally, he does have ankle pivot. Now before we move on to the size comparison, let's dive right into the Figma Todoroki. I never got to review this figure when I first got it because I wasn't doing review videos back then. But anyways, let's just get right into it. So first off, here is a quick look at the packaging. Now when it comes to the box designs, Figma has a more minimalist style on theirs, which isn't really a bad thing, but it does look really plain compared to the creative and colorful packaging that we've seen seen from Kyoto. The top of the box shows the same image that we have on the bottom. We get a big window on the front. This is the right side of the box, the left, and the back of the box. Inside we get nothing else other than the inner packaging. Moving on very quickly onto the figure itself. Here we have Figma Todoroki standing next to the Reveltech Todoroki. Looking at them side by side, I think they both look good in their own way. The Figma looks skinnier and younger compared to the Reveltech version because this this figure is based on the earlier seasons of the series, whereas Reveltech is based off more on the later seasons. You can see that the costume designs are slightly different from each other. Reveltech has these bracelet thingies on his wrists, which looks like Spider-Man's web shooters from the comics. I see what you did there, Horikoshi. And the Figma one doesn't really have those bracelet thingies because he only wore them from season 3 onwards, I believe. So this must be based around season 2 if I'm not mistaken. The boots are also slightly different if you pay close attention to them. There are straps on the Reveltech boots and on the Figma, no straps at all. That's no error on either company. Todoroki literally upgraded his boots throughout the series by adding straps onto them for some reason. I guess they didn't give him the right size maybe? Anyways, moving on to the head. I do think that both of their faces turned out pretty good. And I did mention earlier that the Reveltech's face is not perfect and... I'm gonna stick to that. The Reveltech face works. 
but I feel like Figma is able to capture Todoroki's face better. It just looks clean and much closer to the anime in my opinion. The only problem I think I have with the Figma is the hair because it kind of looks bulky on the front and there isn't much hair on the back. They must have done that to allow more range of movement for the head and I do understand that it is necessary to add more articulation but still can't help but notice it at times. So now let's have a look at the accessories Figma on the left and Revel Tech on the right. At this point, I don't even need to tell you guys who has more accessories than the other. Revel Tech wins this one, I mean come on. <laughs> but anyways, Figma offers three interchangeable face plates which is pretty standard for Figma. The first face is of course his neutral expression and then of course he comes with an angry face looking forward and then last but not least he comes with another neutral face but this one is slightly smiling at least on the promo images it looks like he's smiling a bit but on hand not so much there is hardly any difference between these two face plates moving on to the other accessories figma comes with four pairs of interchangeable hands first we get a pair of fists a pair of widespread hands a pair of dynamic looking hands or relaxed hands and then a pair of gripping hands that can be used to have him hold any figma accessories like this and then he does come with two quirk effects for his fire and dice. You just simply attach the fire onto his hand like that and that looks pretty cool. For the ice effect you just put it on the ground, lean his foot onto it and that looks like that. Lastly he comes with your standard Figma stand. It can pretty much do everything that the Reveltech stand can except it only has one port at the center whereas the Reveltech stand has 11 ports on it which is just fine to be honest. I never really thought of needing so many ports on my stands and to be honest the Figma stand actually holds their figures more sturdy compared to the Revoltex stand so I'm going to go with the Figma on this one. Moving on to articulation, Figma's head can tilt side to side, can rotate, can move up at a decent amount, although it does expose the joint in there which kind of looks ugly looking straight at it and then of course he can look down as well. Arms can rotate, can move forward only that much can move outward, elbow can bend halfway through, wrist can rotate, move down and up. He then can crunch forward pretty good and can move back. Waist can rotate, legs can move outward, move back, move forward, knee bend, foot can rotate, move down, move up as well as toe hinge and then of course he does have a little bit of ankle pivot. And now finally for some height comparisons, here is the Figma standing next to the Reveltech figure. As you can see the Figma is about an inch smaller which is actually one of the main issues that people had with this figure because it's too small. Thankfully Reveltech fixed that issue. Or did they? Here's a quick look at the figures standing next to some other figures from the Reveltech series. We have Deku and Bakugo and from here I think it's safe to say that even Kyoto didn't get Todoroki's height very accurately. As you can see Bakugo is a little bit taller than Todoroki which is wrong because Todoroki is supposed to be taller than Bakugo. But even so the Reveltech is still taller than the Figma so it does make it a little more better but just wanted to point out that it is still not 100% accurate so yeah. Next here we have some other Figmas Kazuma from Konosuba on the left and Uraraka on the right and then here they are next to the Dawson model Saitama and the McFarlane All Might. And just for some non-anime crossovers here they are next to the Mafex Peter B. Parker Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Dusty Deadpool repainted. Alright so finally we have reached the conclusion of this review now let's get into my final thoughts about these figures. So uh, here's the thing. If you want to have the best Todoroki figure you can get because you love the character, you love My Hero Academia, then just go with the Revel Tech. <laughs> I think it's pretty clear from this video which one of them has the better execution. One offers a ton of features and playability, while the other just gives you the minimum rate. 
I think the only problems I have with the Reveltech figure is that they didn't give us variations with the flame effects. I just think it would have been better if they gave us another one that is maybe a smaller piece of fire or something just to have a little more freedom with the fire effects. And the two ice effects that can be attached together can be a little bit loose but it's not as loose as Bakugo's gauntlets so it's definitely not a deal breaker. The pegs just need to be plugged in very carefully and it is gonna stay on. Now I'm not saying that the Figma is bad. If you're a Figma only collector and you have the other My Hero figures from Good Smile Company, then you can probably go with this Todoroki. The height doesn't really matter if you only have Figmas because they are scaled pretty good together. However, if you're gonna be mixing up other lines with this figure like the Revel Tech Deku or the Bakugo, he's gonna look small next to them. Unless of course you put them in a dynamic poses it would not be noticeable much, but that is not an option for everybody. So at the end of the day, it really is up to your preferences. I will say that Figma did capture the character's look very well, especially since that's what the company is known for. They've always been able to provide us with good, clean looking figures, but when it comes to this figure or pretty much just the whole My Hero Academia line from Figma, it just feels like they weren't really giving these characters the amount of love that they deserve. And I'm saying this because Figma can make really great figures if they actually wanted to. So I just don't get why they couldn't give these figures the same treatment that they're giving their other lines. Is it because maybe Revel Tech is already beating them to it? No, I don't think so. Figma is competing with Buzzbot making Demon Slayer figures, which is already way ahead of them since they're already making Tengen and Daki figures next year, while Figma is still working on the main characters. So why Figma? By the way, Endeavor is already up for pre-order on Japanese sites, so if you want to get him, then now's your chance before he starts selling up for aftermarket prices. I already placed my pre-order, so you guys can expect that I will be reviewing him as well once he's released. And when they start opening pre-orders for Hawks, I am going to be getting him as well. And I do hope that they release more characters from this line. I really hope they make Shigaraki, or at least all for one. I've been asking for My Hero villains for like forever, so come on Revel Tech, come on Kyoto, give us Shigaraki, give us all for one. If not, a Froppy would be great, an updated Red Riot would be good as well, or even Lemillion. I think Lemillion would look pretty sick in this line. So anyways, to end this review, I'm just gonna be giving Revel Tech Todoroki a rating of 8 out of 10, and then Figma a 5 out of 10. They're both good figures, and like I said, the Figma is just lacking some proper love from its company. But it is a clean and good looking figure. But yeah, Revel Tech is the superior figure from these two, no doubt. But what about you guys? What do you think about this review? Do you agree with my conclusion, or do you actually think Figma is the better figure? Wait. Does anyone actually think that? If you're new to the channel and you like what you saw, then be sure to give it a like. Click that subscribe button for more contents. This channel is all about stop motions. Anime, brick films, Marvel, action figures, all that cool stuff is here. So if you like even just one of those genres, then be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new videos. Please, I need more attention. <laughs> And before ending the video, I would just like to give a shout out to my first YouTube member, which is Harrison Publico. Thank you so much bro for joining the channel, it really means a lot to me. Having new supporters who are willing to go the extra mile to help grow the channel, it just warms my heart. And of course, K5, who has been my only Patreon member for the longest time. Thank you so much for the both of you guys, and I do hope that more people will start to join the community to help sell this channel. But anyways, that is all for today. Again, thank you so much for watching the review. You can click here to watch more videos. YouTube will provide you with the best links to watch based on your browser history. I mean, watch history. <laughs> you get the idea. But anyways, have a good day, everybody. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.